In this video, we'll be exploring OpenSCAD's primitive solids, the cube, sphere, cylinder, and polyhedron. These fundamental shapes are combined to produce your more complex modules and assemblies. The cube, sphere, and cylinder are fairly straightforward, and you should be able to get started using them productively right away. The general polyhedron, however, is a bit more complex. Don't fret if you have to watch that section a few times and experiment with it hands-on for a while, before the concepts sink in. For our first example, let's look at the cube. Cube is used to define any cuboid, or vaguely box-shaped object, and expects two parameters, size and center. In long form, size is a three-element vector defining the dimensions of a potentially irregular cube along x, y, and z axes. In short form, Size is a single number defining the dimension of a regular cube in all three dimensions. Center is a Boolean, true or false. If center is true, the object will be centered at the origin in all three dimensions. If center is false, one corner will be on the origin with the object extending into the positive, positive, positive octant. When the parameters are called by name, it doesn't matter which order they go in. Setting either size or center first will yield the same result. If you leave off the names and instead rely on position to show which parameter is which, size is the first value and center is the second. As before, size can be either a single number for regular cubes or a three-dimensional vector for irregular cuboids. If you omit the center parameter, it defaults to false. And if you omit the size parameter, it defaults to 1 in all three dimensions. Next up, let's look at the sphere. Spheres always start centered at the origin and take a single geometric parameter. If the parameter is unnamed, it will be interpreted as the radius. You can also expressly name the radius with r equals, or alternatively name the diameter with d equals. There are additional special parameters you can provide which determine the number of facets used to approximate the curved surface of the sphere, but we'll go into deeper detail on facet resolution in a separate video. Unlike the cube, you cannot directly pass a three-dimensional vector of radii to form an ellipsoid. To affect this sort of shape, you need to apply a transform such as resize. As you can see in this example, the original sphere has been distorted down to the provided size with a major diameter of 20 along the x-axis, 40 along y, and 10 along z. We'll go into detail of resize, scale, and other transforms in a separate session as well. Next we'll look at the cylinder. By default, cylinders are centered in x and y and have their base at z equals 0. The most common format you'll see when looking at other people's code is using r equals to define the radius and h equals to define the height. If you prefer to define diameter instead of radius, you can do that as well. If you pass a center parameter set to true, your cylinder will be centered on the origin in all three dimensions. Similar to the sphere, cylinders have facets that approximate the curved surface. This property comes in very handy for creating extrusions of regular polygons. For example, set Fn to 3 and you get an equilateral triangle. Setting Fn to 6 gives you what could be the head of a bolt, and subtracting that quote-unquote bolt head and another cylinder from another object gives you a pocket perfectly shaped to trap a nut during assembly in the real world. Cylinders also allow for different radii, or diameters, at the top and bottom, allowing you to create things like friction-fit pins, lids that won't fall through holes, and even cones. 
If you opt to use parameter position instead of name, the parameter order is height, bottom radius, top radius, and then center. Combining the cone approach with facet control, we can make more fun shapes like tetrahedrons, and square pyramids like they have in Egypt. As you'll see next, leveraging the cylinder where possible can be much simpler than expressly defining your polyhedra. The polyhedron is the most general and therefore most complex primitive solid. It can be used to create any shape defined by points connected to form flat faces. Let's start by defining an array of points. Next, we'll drop in a little helper so we can see what's going on. I'll provide this helper code in the description below. As you can see, the points in our array define the vertices of a tetrahedron. Naturally, the next thing we need to do is to connect the points together to form the faces. However, order matters and we want to make sure we can see what we're doing. Open SCAD maintains the concept of inside and outside, and you need your faces to be right side out in order for your rendered objects to be printable, machinable, etc. To better visualize the faces as we build them, we're going to use thrown together mode. You can click on view and then thrown together, or just hit F12. Let's define the first face by connecting 0, 2, and 3. Now, when we preview, you can see that the outside of the face is yellow and the inside of the face is pink. It doesn't matter which point you start with, but you always need to define your points in a clockwise fashion when looking at the face from the outside. If we switch points 2 and 3, you'll see that the face flips so that it's now pink on what should be the outside. This is why thrown together mode is the best way to visually ensure you've specified your points so your faces are facing the right direction. Now, let's complete the tetrahedron by defining the remaining three faces. This tetrahedron is a very simple example of what you can do with polyhedrons. You can define any number of points and faces and are limited only by geometry and your own imagination. That's going to wrap it up for this session on OpenSCAD's Primitive Solids. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave them in the comments below. I'd especially like to know what topics you would like to see covered in future videos. If you made it this far, please hit the like button to feed the algorithm. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.